I'm Nathan. I work for a startup incubator called Makeshift. I'm Edge. I work for an ad agency called Zone Top to Media, and my clients are like Oracle, O2, Aviva, which hopefully you all have it. Yeah, uh, I'm Gemma. I work in account management at JWT, the big advertising agency, and I have a background in search advertising, so we stuff with young people. I'm Jack. I work for a company called iProspect. Me and JWT, I work in the paid social team, clients such as Coke and IKEA. We do Facebook, Twitter stuff for them. Um, the four of us uh, met last year at a Google Leadership Programme called Squared. Um, and over the last eight months or so, we've been taking our learnings from this programme and mentoring young people, um, startups, and big companies like Burberry and Nike um, in how to sort of innovate like startups. Um, so we've done this workshop quite a few times for a broad range of different companies, as you can see up there, um, including Nesta, Mozilla, Oxford University, Princess Trust, Google Campus. Tech Hub, Apps for Good, and Nike Foundation. Um, this, some of these workshop techniques will be some of the things that we've been doing over the last eight months for these guys. Um, you'll generate 100 business ideas in about 15 minutes, in the opening 20 minutes. Um, and it's all about sort of getting you very quickly into some of the kind of decisions you can make. Um, so we're going to start really quickly. Everyone on their feet, um, rather, yeah. Um, and we're going to make a timeline. So grab any post-its or uh, pens that you have on you and come down to the front and you're going to put up global trends, world events, useful technologies and fascinating objects. One post-it per year on each of these things. The most interesting thing that you think happened in that year. So come down with your post-it and, and you've got sort of two minutes to, to fill up this timeline here at the front. So any, the most fascinating thing that you think happened in 2012 to do with any of these topics, come and whack it up on the wall in that year. And what do you think will happen in 2014? Predicting the future. Come, come yeah. forward, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't think about it too hard. Yeah, just come forward, guys. There's no, no such thing as a bad idea. Yeah. 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 Got a binding? Like a five second video sharing device. So, into the last 30 seconds, guys. And everyone else, come forward because the next task is going to be the business idea generation very quickly. So, everyone else, come forward if you, even if you haven't got an idea yet. Come on forward, come right to the front. Make sure you've got some post its in your hands. I watched in 2014. I think we need more future predicting. 2014 is looking pretty bad. <laughs> think about extension, even crazy things, extensions of of our senses, abilities, holograms, tech, holograms, growing wings, Google cars, yep. flying generally. <laughs> okay, last 10 seconds, guys. Any other ideas you've got? Whack them up there. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah? Everyone done? Looking, looking quite good. Okay, so make sure you've got some post-its in your hand um, for the next task. Because that was just to sort of get you warming up, thinking about uh, what's going to happen in the past and what's happening in the future and connecting the patterns. Um, because someone, so Steve Jobs sort of said that creativity is about connecting things. And the next thing that we're going to do is start to put all of these things and generate uh, ideas based on the buckets that these kinds of things are. So um, everyone kind of grab some post-its, come closer to the front, um, because for the next five minutes we want you to think of three kinds of things <coughs> and shout them and whack them on the wall when you think of them. So data sources, so weather data, crime data, uh, you know, clothing data, that kind of thing, shopping data, all that kind of stuff. Web services, Facebook, Kickstarter, and there's only ever one of the thing. Once it's been shouted and whacked up on the wall, that's the only thing in that group that's up there. So there's only ever one Facebook, only ever one Vine. So once it's been said, it's a race to see who can say all these things first. We're going to empty our brains of 
all of these different kinds of things up there. So it's web services, data sources, and technologies. So types of technologies, maybe photo recognition, augmented reality, speech, uh, speech recognition, any of those kinds of things. So we've got five minutes to empty our brains of all of these different kinds of things that we're using so that we're gonna, we're gonna sort of base some business ideas based on these things. You've got five minutes, guys. Go. Please, please. Vine. Yeah, 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 just whack it and shout it on the wall. Web services. What, Pinterest. What kind of, Pinterest, bang. Excellent. SoundCloud, who's going to whack it up? Who's going to put CCT CCTV data up there? Nectar card. Nectar card data. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Vine. Contactless card technology. Yes, yeah. NFC. Clothing data. I think you're overthinking it, guys. Come on. WordPress. Yeah, WordPress, whack it up there. Location data. Google Maps. Uber. Uber. Put it up. Halo. All the data at the university has all of you here. <laughs> yeah, housing data. Um, yeah, 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 rack it up. PayPal. PayPal. <laughs> Amazon. Amazon, yeah, shopping data. That's a massive one. Has anyone got eBay? eBay data. YouTube, someone's put YouTube. Nice. Vimeo. Yeah, Vimeo, wrap Vimeo up there. I don't think this is the sum of everything that you guys know. There's not enough up here, guys. Whack some more stuff up there. Um, <laughs> iTunes. Spotify. Spotify, yeah. All of it. Have we got Reddit? LinkedIn, put it up Reddit. there. Or yeah. Chara. It's OK. Yeah. Yeah. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to hand out sheets of paper. And what you're going to do is you're going to take no time at all. So I want everyone to come up with five mashups. And when I say mashup, I mean take the first thing you spot and mash it up with the next thing. Give it a name. So like crime data times Kickstarter equals fundmyhood.com. <laughs> Whatever it is, you mash two or three things together and you give it a name and you've got five minutes there's no such thing as a bad idea you just connect the things you mash so we've emptied our brains and everything that we can possibly think of is here so why not tie why not sort of you know mash a few of them together and, and come up with ideas you've got five minutes to to think of these mashup ideas can we just take them off the wall yeah, you can take them off if you want to take them off. Oh, yeah, exactly, that's what I'm thinking. But then I don't want them to take my idea. So, ideas are cheap. Uh, good one. <laughs> 3D scanning. Any, any, any two things together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? Oh, she's good. We've got another minute, guys. As many as you can think of. There's no such thing as a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, or, or switch the ombudsman. Yeah, switch the ombudsman. Oh, yeah, that works. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's time, guys. Oh, okay. nice. Everyone head back to where you were sitting and in self-selecting groups, so you should be near people who have each have like a big sheet of paper near you, so it should be easy to self-select into groups um, and what we want you to do is to tell each other each of your ideas and choose one that you're going to run with for the rest of the workshop. You've got three minutes to speak about your ideas and choose one that you're going to go with. Uh, yeah, three, no, just 3D movies at home. Yeah. But then we already have this. Yeah, we do. That's, that's and you can print these out so that you can, if you have an idea or something, and you can design it and put it up on a Wiki page and then. Like, you can share it and I can send it to my friend if I like it. The other one was... Should we give a name to this one? Uh, we called it 3D Wiki, but we can change it to whatever. This is just an idea. You can pick whatever you want. The other one we called 3D Wiki.
will be grouped. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because LinkedIn yeah. has it is, yeah. you, you cannot find people. You've got two minutes left to start writing the idea of the machine. We've got three ideas. First of all, traffic with the air traffic data with Spotify. That gives us plainmusic.com, so the website where people can upload what kind of music they listen and different. I know Roots, for example, from UK to America. So we have some problem on my computer or laptop. I can shrink custom to walk away on the and they can say, okay, this is what I can do this, do that. Yeah, shop with that one idea. Guys, 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 we hope you've got something written down because we're going to run the next rest of the workshop with that one idea going forward. And then at the end of the workshop, we're each going to, each going to present your ideas. Um, so the next stage, uh, now that we've got some ideas, we're going to think about how these ideas might make money. So um, there's a great website um, here. We won't go into it now, but it's, it's basically um, tells you a bunch of different ways that our favorite technology sites make money. Uh, you can come and sort of ask us if you want to sort of find out about it afterwards. But first of all, uh, we're going to find out ways that some of the top uh, websites make money and we're going to use those to generate ideas for uh, your ideas. So, someone want to shout out any ways that Twitter used to make money, does make money, or might make money in the future? Shout them out and we'll write them out. Advertising. advertising. What kind of advertising? Yeah, yep, yep, promoted yep. tweets. Yeah. Shout them out. Yeah, analytics. Analytics, yeah, insights. More, more, more. You could advertise for something else in the tweet. Hashtag promotion. Yes, hashtag promotions, absolutely. Anyone else got any ideas as to how Twitter might make money? Location-based Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. Great shout. On TV. Can you sell that data? Yeah. Yeah. Sending the data. Yep. API. Yes. Big shout. Great shout. Uh, do you know how much it costs? Or okay. So we're we're going to reveal that now. Yes. Um, so these are the different ways that Twitter makes money. Uh, so selling access to the flow of data which is 360,000 a year for half the amount. So half the fire hose is, is uh, yeah, a third of a million a year. Um, they do insights and consulting. Um, they used to allow uh, Google and Bing to have um, results in their, you know, in their stream so they could, they could have real-time um, licenses. Um, yeah, promoted tweets, promoted trends, promoted accounts, white label solutions. Um, and yeah, access to uh, in-stream advertising, so like Chirpify, you can actually buy things in the Twitter stream. Um, okay, so keep those in mind. Um, we're going to go on to the next one. Someone tell us the way that Spotify makes money. All the different ways you can think of that Spotify makes money. Premium. Yes, big shout. So paid for accounts, freemium. Self-promotion. Self-promotion, maybe. Yes. Featured songs. Featured artists. Yep, yeah, featured yeah. artists. I see the launches of partnerships. Yes, good shout. Anyone else? Any ideas about how Spotify make money? Advertising. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good, uh, so we'll reveal how many money. So at the moment, uh, only some, some brands can use the, uh, the Spotify API, so access to the API. Um, they merchandise for brands, uh, for bands and artists, uh, premium subscription. Uh, they're moving into real life events, so selling tickets and, and experiential content. Partnerships um, and selling the licenses for hardware. So I think when you buy certain phones, you get like a um, a Spotify account with them, a paid for Spotify account with them. Uh, Co-branding, so I think with, I think it might be with a, I can't remember which bank it's with, but actually when you open a bank account you get like a Spotify gift voucher. Um, so that co-branding is, is quite an interesting one. Um, an interesting sort of value proposition as they had is that initially when it was put out there um, you had to be invited, so the membership becomes a value itself. Uh, so remember some of those, because we're going to use them shortly. Um, and how does Skype make money? <laughs> Say again? Premium accounts. Yes. Any others? Shout them out. Internet to real phone calls. Yes. 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 
So credits. And group calling? Yep, group calling. Screen sharing. Yep. So paid for business, business accounts. Any others? What label? Yep. Any others? Okay. Um, so, freemium, again, um, you can get a Skype phone number for a price. Um, you can pay for sort of added features like an answer machine. Um, credit or monthly subscriptions. Um, advertising. Um, Skype premium for business, as you mentioned. Um, the Wi-Fi requires also a payment. Um, and probably the most interesting one is the fact that you pay cash deposits for credits. So they'll hold on to your real money and give you sort of pretend Skype credits uh, in return for that, and they make money on the interest. Uh, uh, they also started selling uh, phones as well, so selling hardware. Okay, so you've seen all these different um, ways of revenue streams for making money. You've got two minutes to think of as many different of those that you could apply to the business that you've started writing down. Go. <laughs> Absolutely. Music. Yeah. Teenage. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Does anyone think like health and fitness? Yes. Yeah, yeah probably. Watches. Hmm? Watches. Yeah. Watches, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Um, okay, so what about this? Where does this fit in? Fitness again. Okay, so we've kind of revealed why these guys might have co-branded together. Um, when you kind of think about the fact that they have shared values, so obviously the iPod is in sort of entertainment and music, um, and you could say fashion as well probably. Um, but the thing that sort of overlaps about both of them is uh, fitness, act and being active, and and health. Um, so branding is kind of about shared values. Um, so what we'd like you to do for two minutes, kind of as, as individuals, but initially think of someone you really admire and think of all the values that you, you admire about them. So are they really fun? Are they really bold? What is it about them you admire? Um, and write them each of them down on a post-it. Um, you've got two minutes to do that. So do that kind of individually and then we'll go into weekly. Uh, put your hand up if you need post-its. Okay, another minute, so that you've got a chance to have a few. Yeah. Uh, we're exposed. Well, we're good. 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 It doesn't have to be a person, it could be a company, but just the values you admire. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Has anyone not got any? Everyone got some? Okay, and the groups that you're in is to put them all down and start to cluster them to see where there are commonalities. Um, and then think about how you can apply those group values that you now have to this business that you're building. Yeah, has anyone... So knowing a bit about what your idea is, how it's going to make money, and what your values are, you should be able to start thinking about who your most valuable customer is. Um, but the way that you start thinking about who your most valuable customer is is that you have to map out the life cycle of your product. Um, so thinking about who that is, you have um, people who will normally, if it's an online technology product, you're probably going to have people that view your site, um, but they go no further. 
you're probably then going to have a percentage of those that sign up. Um, and, and so you have a bit of their data, whether it's an email, or they sign up through Facebook, or perhaps Twitter, um, but don't necessarily come back to your site regularly. A percentage of those will become regular, so maybe they come to your site two or three times a week. Um, a percentage of those guys will probably like your, like your content enough to share it, um, and a percentage of those guys will probably uh, end up being your most valuable customers, so the people who actually pay to use your, your service. Uh, so it's all about relationships and how you're going to get people through those different mind states from being someone who just comes at the beginning and has a quick look at it and doesn't come back to right through to someone who, who actually pays for it. Um, so you have to start thinking about who you're going to be talking to before you begin to talk to them. Um, and this is really important because when you start off small, uh, you can launch a problem small, scale it after you've done it big. So what I mean by that is that you can solve a problem or a need that's quite niche. And if you do that really well, then you can scale it quite big after you've done it because you've got some traction. So I'm assuming you guys know who these guys are. Yeah, so they're, they're, they started really small in their garage and they solved a problem of you know, sort of disorganized information on the internet. They then started to scale it out um, because they solved that problem in a really small way. And similarly, uh, you know, this guy started in his dorm room and he started on uh, one campus. And it took two years before you could actually join Facebook while not being a part of a university. So they got one niche audience really right. They got that engagement right for one niche audience and they sort of scaled it afterwards. So nail it and scale it is, is kind of the phrase that we're talking about. So thinking about you've got your values, you've got your idea, what are some of the ways that, what are the sort of demographics that you can think that you can begin to target people with? Any ideas at all? So I'm kind of talking about the things like, like gender, like location, age, interests, device, occupation, and time. So these are the kinds of things that you, you will find out about people online, and you can begin to sort of target people once, once you know those things. Those are the kinds of things you can begin to target people with. So thinking about those things, you can start to see, based on your idea, who your most valuable customer is. Um, so thinking about that, thinking about all the things you've done so far, I'll do a little, spend five minutes doing a little illustration of who you think your most valuable customer might be. Um, Go. Yeah, that is like, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Does anyone ask them if they want to share? So illustrate guys, draw a picture of who these people are. We've got two minutes left to do an illustration. Last minute, guys. So on to the next bit. How do you actually go about getting your valuable customers? So it's all about thinking about the different behaviours at each stage. Uh, so how can you get more awareness? How can you get sign-ups? How can these people? How can you get these people playing more regularly? Um, how can you make your brand more shareable? And what will your fans pay for? How can you get those people paying? Um, so starting with the awareness, because that's probably the, the you know the biggest one. Getting uh, getting actually getting out there and getting known. 
Um, there are generally two ways to do it. You can do free but slow, which encompasses social media, blogging and content strategy, and search engine optimization. So these ways are generally quite slow, but they, but they can you know, sort of often be quite effective and, uh, and free. Um, fast, but not so free, is uh, using AdWords to specifically target uh, keywords that people are searching for, or you can be quite specific in Facebook ads and uh, sort of targeting people by their like demographics. Um, and also by, by mobile and location data as well. So we're just going to quickly run through a few of those. Um, so basically it's about finding what people are doing on particular sites. So an image like that, you know, so ex social media explains. So Twitter, I'm eating a donut. Facebook, I like donuts. Foursquare, this is where I eat donuts. It's about knowing where and why people use particular web properties. So with Google, it's that people are in intention mode. They want to find something out. Um, so they go to it to look for it. So you have to anticipate what people are searching for. And if you can put your ad where they are searching, then you'll come, you'll come up tops. Facebook is a bit more passive. Um, so you have to be embedded into the natural conversations. Um, but Facebook is great for demographics because people are you know, sort of sharing all the links and you're sort of telling Facebook what you actually like. So it's really, really easy to find uh, good demographic data on Facebook. Uh, Twitter is much more, uh, much more interesting to do with interest. So it's about uh, getting readership up and be do, building like a reputation through consistency and conversation. Um, but generally, if you're putting content out there, 70% of it should be low risk. So finding out what other people are already talking about and putting your spin on it. Um, so you don't have to be producing your own content all the time. 20% um, of that should be uh, original content. So uh, blogging and video, you know, making videos uh, actually sort of takes quite a bit of time. So it's probably better to look at the kinds of conversations that people are having and base not as much time on it, but sort of do it quite in a sort of much better way. And then 10% should be that sort of highly original risk ideas. And those are sort of the things that are much more likely to sort of catch on because you do a lot less of them but perhaps there a bit more out there. Um, but one of the best ways is actually to start building an online uh, reputation through commenting on other people's blogs. So if you find a particularly influential blog um, that's you know, sort of influential on the subject matter, why not sort of go and start commenting on, to, commenting on the blog and uh, you know, sort of starting to build a reputation, reputation on that. It's quite a good free way to do that. Um, you think, have to think of a user of these sites, that they don't want to be spammed. You have to sort of think that uh, you know, the people on these sites for a reason and you have to think about uh, what problems your website is solving um, in order to, to do that. Um, so we looked at a few successful startups that have launched and they all got sort of a similar pattern. Um, firstly, they build a product that naturally engages with a particular demographic. Secondly, they showed their product to influential people in that demographic. Next, those influential people uh, allow, share their website, so they sort of created features that um, allowed the website to be shared quite easily. Um, and finally, they sort of created an online reputation that, that lived their brand values. Um, finally, there's uh, sort of bits on um, Facebook's ad builder is quite good for, uh, for building sort of demographics. So you can see there, you can actually see, you know, there are 900,000 people in the UK that are between the ages of 19 and 30 who are male that like video games. So you can be quite targeted in who you're, who you're sort of going for on your ads on Facebook. Um, and similarly, you can sort of find out the estimates for keywords using um, AdWords and the tools that Google have. Um, we're all sort of specialists in, in sort of these tools, so if you want to sort of talk to us about um, any of the startups that you guys are using, um, and we'll be more than happy to sort of make some recommendations for you based on, based on this stuff. Um, but generally, if you want to acquire users, you have to sort of get into their mindset and have to be uh, quite empathetic. Um, but you also have to use your resources quite effectively to, um, to target them and then, and then acquire them. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, but we'd like to hear your ideas. Um, so who wants to stand up and tell us and show us what they've been, what they've been doing? You. What? You, so you sat down. Go on, go for it. <laughs> Share, share, so share. That's all right, that's all right. So if, if you can, share with us what mashup it was, okay. how it makes money, the values, and the audience that you've drawn. Okay, it was basically a mashup of Cabby and the Google Play Store. So it's basically playing uh, smartphone games in a cab. 
So on a big screen at the back of your seat. Cool. So that's basically what it is. Uh, there are lots of ways that that can make money. Yeah, um, advertising, that's what we thought of. Location-based advertising, because you're going to be in the cab. So yep. wherever you go, you're going to have uh, location-specific uh, ads. Um, partnerships, I guess, with specific games that are that want to, uh, they, the, the cast play only those games yep. in the cap, so then you partner, partner with those uh, uh, companies and I don't know what that is. So it's really interesting that you guys say that actually, because I was at London Web Summit on Friday and one of the top investors in New York I was there as well. Was talk, uh, David Titch, one of the guys at the end, was talking about how one of his most recent investments was um, a really small uh, vending machine that fits in the back of cabs, which is kind of, sort of similar. So you guys should, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a similar idea to something that someone else is invested in. So yeah, into cab yeah. Birds competition. Yeah, absolutely. Well done. Good job, guys. And who else wants to share? Go for it. Yeah, um, this is actually absolutely awesome. <laughs> I, I actually want to do it when Google Glass is out. I'm not even joking, so please don't steal the idea just yet. Right? Let me do it. Let me do it. <laughs> anyway, it's a mix between Google Glass and TaskRabbit. For those who don't know TaskRabbit, it's more popular in the US. You basically go on this website and you get people to do your jobs. So if I've got a plumbing problem in the, in the kitchen, I get someone for $30 and they fix it for me. Google Glass, I'm sure you've seen the adverts about it. So uh, I've got the glasses and I've got a camera in there as well. So we combine those two, and then we can pair up with like schools or PC World, for instance. And if you've got a problem with your laptop and you've got Google Glass, well, wear those glasses, look at your laptop, and you're talking to an expert. Say, hey, I've got a problem with my laptop, how to fix it? You're there, he says, okay, do this, do that, do that. So you're instantly sorting out your problem by yourself by following instructions. That sounds like an actual thing that might actually work out. Uh, that's our idea, really. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Cool. Nice job. Who else wants to share? You guys? Come on. Come on. Hello. Um, we had originally the two things from the thread were Netflix and Wikipedia. So, um, no. uh, we were thinking of a video editing kind of website. So it's kind of like an open source project where everyone can go to the site and edit a video. For example, oh. if you type like Oxford and then you would watch a video, you can add it. You can add things that relate to Oxford. And it's not necessarily to be a place, it could be like company. It's say if you type Google into the site, you can watch a video that's about Google and everyone can add it and everyone can add things, people can make comments about it. It's kind of like Wikipedia, but a video based thing. Right. Cool. How are you make, how are you gonna make money? It's free because it's Wikipedia, right? <laughs> That's the <laughs> answer. <laughs> so free donation. Crowd, crowd, crowd yeah. Crowd yeah. Crowd 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 yeah. Crowd. We uh, we rely on donations basically. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Good job. Thank you. Is anyone else want to share? Yeah. Yeah. Either one of you guys. You are. There's not much in this actually. So basically, we want to combine two big ideas. First of all, it's the 2014 Football World Cup in Brazil. Basically football. And the second one is LinkedIn. Uh, so we'd like to uh, start up a platform for young professionals, for a little bit older professionals, to have uh, one love with football. Um, basically, we, we base on the values, which is team spirit and leadership. That's actually what the football is all about. Um, and uh, being actually shaping your character and personality through, through team sports. And uh, how to commercialize this? Well, we like to make money on, for example, selling uh, tickets for matches to big corporations, um, a little bit like Football Groupon. Uh, another thing is advertising um, through the merchandising and things like this. Um, and our target group is more or less males, 25 to 45 years old, white colors, living in big cities, uh, mainly in Europe. Because in the US they play soccer. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, yeah, that's about it. Uh, come and speak to us afterwards if you'd continue to learn more about this kind of stuff. But feel free to use any of these techniques that we showed you today. Uh, and cheers. Thanks a lot. Thank you.